consider visiting the link in the description to get unique Mothlight Media merchandise. The largest land animals that ever lived are of course sauropods, and although there is some uncertainty which is the largest sauropod, the least controversial candidate is Argentinosaurus. Argentinosaurus was 35 meters long, it weighed as much as 10 African elephants, and just its femur was larger than a person. When looking at such a giant animal, it is tempting to conclude that this may have been as large as animals can get. So is this true? Although it was probably due to several reasons, the gigantic sizes that sauropods reached is thought to have more to do with their anatomy than the environment they lived in. Sauropods and all dinosaurs, including birds, just have really good biology for becoming giants, which places less physical restraints on the size than what other animals have to deal with. For instance, if a human being was immediately scaled up to the size of a sauropod, they would break a bone every time they took a step. And all types of animals have drastically different size limits for different reasons. The largest insect in the world is the goliath beetle, and only weighs 100 grams. This is because the way that insects breathe restrains them from getting any larger than this. Insects don't have lungs, and instead get oxygen into their bodies through a network of tiny tubes known as trachea. Air enters into these tubes through a row of openings that run down the body of the insect, where the oxygen can then dissolve into the walls of the tubes. The problem is that without lungs to pull the air through the tubes, the oxygen can only get a certain distance into their body, and so insects larger than a certain size wouldn't be able to breathe properly. Over 300 million years ago in the Carboniferous, oxygen levels were 50% higher than today, and so insects like Arthropleura, the giant millipede, were able to become 2 meter giants. The largest land mammal known to have lived was Parasitherium, that would have been 5 meters at the shoulder, and possibly weighed as much as 15 tons. This animal was very large, but is beaten in size by many species of sauropod, and it could be that this is as big as mammals can get. It is very possible that the reason behind this size restraint might be due to the mammal's historic strength, their warm bloodedness, as the larger an animal gets, the harder it is to regulate their body temperature. Mammals would also have problems in gaining size because they give birth to live young, so as they gain in size, so does the infant they need to give birth to. Sauropods would not have had this problem as they just laid eggs, very small eggs, and that gave rise to very small young before they started their journey of rapid growth. They also most likely did not play any parental role, as this would have been incredibly difficult if you weigh over 50 tons. So they just laid their eggs, and then the infant sauropods would have had to have fended for themselves. Mammals are also restricted in size because of their weight, the same as with all animals. As animals get larger, their muscle strength does not increase proportionately to their body weight. The larger an animal gets, more of their muscle strength is taken up carrying around the weight of their body. This is the reason why many species of insects are able to lift and pull weights hundreds of times their weight, and why elephants are unable to jump and find it very difficult to stand on two legs. Sauropods had an advantage with dealing with this problem over mammals and other animals because they had many air sacs throughout their body. Air sacs are any part of the animal where there is a constant presence of air, and which birds have the most of today, mainly in the form of hollow bones and the hollow bones of birds started in dinosaurs, with a hollow vertebrae being a characteristic of all sauropods, keeping their long necks very lightweight. This biological feature was very effective at keeping their weight low. For instance, the lowest weight estimates for Argentinosaurus are around 50 tons, but Parasitherium weighed 15 tons, and African elephants weigh 6 tons, meaning that Argentinosaurus were 10 to 20% lighter compared to body size than large mammalian animals. Gigantism didn't just stop there, as the shape of their body was also perfect for large sizes. Their pillar-shaped legs and robust body provided the stability and strength needed to support their weight, and their very lightweight head and tail would have just sat on top of this structure. Despite the fact that sauropods were larger than any other animals by a big margin, there were a few other dinosaurs that were Argentinosaurus sized. Supersaurus and Diplodocus were also massive dinosaurs that most likely surpassed 40 tons. So this supports the idea that Argentinosaurus was reaching some sort of plateau or natural size limit to these animals. However, this does not necessarily mean their weight was the reason for this. In fact, recent studies have found that sauropods were so fantastically evolved for being giants that they would have been robust enough to exceed the 100 ton barrier, or perhaps get even larger. 
and it is most likely that what was restricting their size beyond 50 to 70 tons was actually the amount of food they could eat. As an animal gets larger, their energy requirements increase exponentially, and in large herbivorous animals this is satisfied by almost continuous grazing. It is possible that sauropods were actually limited as beyond a certain point they were not able to eat enough to support their mass. Blue whales are considerably larger than even the largest sauropods, commonly weighing over 100 tons, and this is usually explained by them having less gravity stresses from living in the water. But as explained, it seems that sauropods did not reach their physical size limits, so there may be other reasons why blue whales were able to become larger than sauropods. One is that while nearly all large land animals are herbivorous, in the oceans this is the opposite, and all the largest animals are carnivorous. This is because in the oceans animal life take up a larger proportion of the biomass than plant life, but also meat is more energy dense than most vegetation. This gives ocean going animals two distinct advantages over land animals for reaching giant sizes. They have access to more energy dense food, but also that this food swarms and can be engulfed quickly. An elephant can take almost the whole day to eat 70,000 calories worth of plants, but a blue whale is able to eat half a million calories in one gulp, provided they are in krill rich waters. Animals also need to be forced into gigantism by the correct selective pressures. And in the case of sauropods and whales, they were almost certainly driven into their massive sizes in an arms race with giant predators, theropod dinosaurs and giant sharks. Active hunters need to be more nimble than herbivorous animals to get their food, and so have greater physical restraints to size. Restraints that are mitigated for animals living in the ocean, meaning that it was very likely that sauropods may not have reached a physical barrier to their size, but actually their predators reached a size barrier, and therefore they had no pressure to get any larger. So sauropods probably weren't the largest that animals could ever get to on earth, but for them to ever need to get any larger, and have a sufficient food source that could fuel their giant sizes, the ecosystems on Earth would have to be very different. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to be notified of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons for supporting me, especially Grim Marshall, Green Fours, and Sammy Voz.